But investigative journalism usually is, is considered to be the people who go the extra mile, who read all the reports and not just some of the summaries. The impact of investigative journalism. Margaret Smith, uh, you were an investigative journalist for 20 years. How would you define investigative journalism and has that definition sort of changed over the years? Well, my husband always says investigative reporting is like a, um, doubling up, you know, it's um, because every journalist needs to investigate. Um, but investigative journalism usually is, is considered to be the people who go the extra mile, who read all the reports and not just sum the summaries and who do all the data crunching, except uh, instead of taking other people's data and taking them for granted. So um, I think it has become more... Um, it, we would call it, when I was uh, president of VVOJ, the Dutch Association of Investigative Reporters, we would call it in-depth and critical. Mm -hmm. But that's also a doubling up, I think, because critical and journalism also, in my opinion, at least go together. So I think it is, it is you know, in-depth. It's the people who, who go the extra mile. I don't think it has changed much in the definition. Mm -hmm. It it has changed in the way we do it, the way we perform it. But we'll probably talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Because, um, yes, you've been Olivier van Bema, you've, uh, you are an investigative journalist, most known for your book, uh, Heineken in Africa, sort of unraveling the, the malpractices of, of this big multinational. Have you always known that you wanted to be an investigative journalist and how did that come about? I was a correspondent, so I basically, uh, my, my kind of uh, goal in, <laughs> in life as a journalist in my career, uh, I was living it when I was 22, so <laughs> that was uh, a bit too early maybe. But then, uh, well, I really liked the job, but at one point I got into more investigative stories. And I thought, well, this is really, this is even better. This, this is what real journalism is about, uh, really uncovering things that are not known to the, to the public yet. So basically, uh, I, I found my, my passion of investigative journalism when I was, um, I was covering uh, the downfall of Ben Ali in, in Tunisia. And there, for the first time, I got in touch with uh, what Heineken was doing. First of all, I was quite surprised that Heineken was active in a predominantly Muslim country and was selling a lot of beer there but I also found out they were uh, in a partnership with uh, with the local clan of the dictator and they were not open about that at all so that really got me on the track like this this is the real work and uh, I should continue doing this. Marho you are the ombudsman for the, the Dutch public broadcaster uh, NPO yeah. which has a stronghold on all the uh, omroepen. Uh, yeah. 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 And so uh, from, yeah, w actually, let's start with what exactly do you do? What does your job entail? Um, what I do basically is uh, two things. I can um, investigate complaints by the public or people who are uh, uh, portrayed in stories about the journalism that's been done by the uh, um, uh, people who work for the public broadcaster, so it's only the public bro broadcaster, or I can, you know, investigate myself. I talk a lot about journalism ethics with reporters, I visit newsrooms, um, but the ombudsman always looks at, at uh, stories when they are produced and are broadcast. How would you say your role plays an important um, function for in at being maybe the centerpiece between investigative journalists and the public. You know, what I see is that with investigative stories, investigative reporters are more than the day-to-day -day reporters, I believe, right. um, used to already explaining how they work. So I'm... I always like it when I get a complaint about an investigative story because usually I will have somebody, have a reporter with me who knows very well what he or she did and knows very well how to explain it because that's a big part of when you write a book, you tell your reader, this is what I did, this is where I found my information, this is how I validated my information yeah. because you know that you only have your own credibility if that's gone. You're basically, you know, you could, you're gone yourself as a journalist. So, so I, I, um, I have, um, I get the sense that investigative reporters very well know what they're doing. Yeah. So, and I like to be that bridge kind of between the public and the and the reporters to explain how they did their job, mm -hmm. and um, 
I hope the public sees that, you know, investigative reporting is usually done with a lot of care and a lot of, uh, um, you know, digging into, can we trust these sources? Why do we use these sources? Are there different data? So it's, it's, it's the day-to-day -day news is much harder to have all these checks and balances already on the first day of reporting. Then you said like your correspondence days, you analyze news that's already there. When you dig it up yourself, you really need to show how did I do it? How did I do it? So Yeah, because Olivier, you took on an $18 billion company pretty much on your own. <laughs> it's, um, did you have many sleepless nights or did you, yeah, how did, what was that like, that feeling of in those six years of investigating yeah. this story? Well, I had the odd uh, sleepless <laughs> nights. Uh, sometimes, yeah, it was basically me uh, investigating this this huge company with uh, with with uh, yeah with uh, operating companies all around the world, and uh, I looked into their African business. Um, and sometimes you think, uh, well, maybe I'm having it all completely wrong. Uh, maybe I'm being too hard on them. Maybe, mm. uh, maybe this is senseless anyway. Maybe this is a perfect company. Th th these are the kind of reflections that, especially at night, uh, you, uh, you, you may have. Anna Gilevska, uh, we are joined online by you. Hello, and thank you for joining. Let's start right off. You are the vice uh, president of Reporters Foundation. What exactly does Reporters Foundation do? So the Reporters Foundation is uh, the first uh, center for investigative uh, journalism in Poland so that was established back in 2010. So in the region, uh, we provide them with training uh, uh, and uh, yeah, like trying to somehow, you know, facilitate and coordinate this kind of uh, collaboration, especially cross-border collaboration, but also you know, cross-functional collaboration, collaboration within the Polish uh, media markets. You're really in the heart of investigative journalism in Poland, but this whole cross-collaborative view you have as well. Do you think people realize the importance of investigative journalism? And maybe let's start by hearing from you why you think it is important in Poland, but also working with the cross-border organizations. Well, you know, independent investigative journalism is just the, the core of democracy and uh, holding power to account, you know, following the money, all that was already said uh, and just generally, you know, reporting on some wrongdoings and, and informing audience uh, uh, what is behind the scene. That's like the very, very essential role for investigative journalism, especially in shrinking democracies uh, in democracies like unfortunately ours right now um so in poland you know the things are, are really constantly moving in quite a bad direction we are following victor orban's path in hungary i believe you know investigative journalism in such situations such a situation times and circumstances is even more important it's really essential to to democracy to kind of uh, expose uh, what is really happening and, and counter the pro-government propaganda because you know the, the government really took over so-called public media at the very beginning so this is like a very pure propaganda media right now and there are also many uh, private pro-government media um, uh, obtaining loads of public money public funds for you know for the ads and so on so also supporting the government and its propaganda and narrative in in this situation it's it's really uh, um, you know important and uh, um, necessary to uh, to somehow maintain um, investigative for journalism role um, David Lee, uh, very well-known investigative, well, head, head reporter at The Guardian, yes, former head main reporter, investigative, he once said that investigative journalism is like as essential as, as water. Um, would you agree with that statement? And if so, and yeah, why? I would definitely uh, agree. And, and it's like mm, we've been uh, discussing uh, here, so there's difference between between just reporting on the news and uh, reporting what's on the surface and really going behind so trying to understand 
what is behind, uh, what is under the surface, who is behind. It really takes a lot of effort and uh, journalistic experience, tools, methods uh, to understand this whole landscape. It takes time as well. Uh, and it's um, in the like best uh, uh, situation, it takes collaboration um, to, uh, to understand very complex uh, uh topics so um yeah and at the end it's uh, it helps uh, the audience to understand what is going on all right thank you so much thank you everyone for joining today um yes this was studio free press matters see you next time